Avoid Hell Biz Stock is the name of this presentation. And if you're wondering why the hell somebody would name their business Hell Biz, then you need to look at the micro mobility market to better understand that. So, Hell Biz is one of many companies operating in what's referred to as micro mobility. And there's a lot of ways that you can define that, but for the purposes of this presentation, we've narrowed that down to electric powered micro mobility vehicles of the type that you can see here. So, you have a scooter uh, on the left there, of course, a electric bicycle, and then a traditional scooter, the seated type on the right. So when we talk about micro mobility, one way that we can determine who the players are is by looking at all the mentions in the media. So our company Hellbiz actually isn't here. Hellbiz is a smaller player, but uh, this information is useful nonetheless. At the top, you can see Lime. Then down the list, you have Spin, Voy, Tier, Dot, Zip, Bird also is an, oh yeah, Bird's there in position number five. So these are names that you'll come across. Now, this e-scooter that you see here on the right, this is one I was riding just several weeks ago in Qatar. And in order to utilize that method of transportation, I simply downloaded the app in my hotel room. I went out onto the streets of Qatar and I found myself a little scooter there. I attached the credit card to my app and this the app actually helped me locate where the scooters were, although they're all over the place on the streets of Qatar or in Doha, generally speaking. I scan the scooter with the app. I climb on board and I operate it. Uh, there's geofencing to make sure that I couldn't go in particular places, which is rather frustrating because it will turn off and then you have to figure out where the geofence is and roll it back to where you were at. But it's quite fun and it was also rather expensive. So the use case here is obvious, right? If you're somebody who lives in an urban area and you need a method of transport to get around, whether you're a tourist as I was or you're just somebody that uh, works as a distance from work that you'd rather take a scooter than public transportation, they're very, very fun to drive. And um, you can clearly see uh, how micro mobility fits into urban planning. Now, when you think about the logistics at play here, the operators, this is a Lime scooter. Um, broken or dead scooters, those are lost revenue. So charging e-scooters needs to happen very quickly. The old business model, which is just remarkable that they used to utilize this, and they still do, is that you get yourself a big van, you drive around with an app, you pick up these scooters, you take them to your place, you charge them, you take them back out and return them where they need to be, and then the operator will pay you to do that. Very inefficient, right? What's the better idea? The better idea is to have removable batteries that you can very quickly swap out. That makes sense from every perspective. It's easy to understand. It's intuitive. And that's the most efficient way to operate this business. So we believe that this is the only use case that makes sense in micromobility. Experts are uh, led to that conclusion as well. So the only barrier to entry is really license. And that has, means this is becoming a race to the bottom on cost. So you need to reduce the cost of operating this platform as much as possible, therefore reinforcing the removable battery thesis. But also, there are very few barriers to entry other than license. So in Qatar, for example, I think I counted five or six different scooter operators. There was a local one called the Falcon, clearly a uh, a Qatari company. There was Lime, of course. They seem to have the best presence, the best uh, scooters. Uh, uh, they have this little green light on the handlebar that kind of you can see it from a distance. They, they seemed to be the dominant provider there, though I used Bird because I had used Bird uh, previously. Um, so the removal battery is important. Um, some assumptions, so all micro mobility companies are going to migrate to swappable batteries. So if you're a company that hasn't, then you need to do that. Uh, most riders won't need to swap batteries, but from an operational standpoint, you need that. Cost needs to be equal or less than Uber. Honestly, I don't think it was in Qatar. So at least for Bird, I don't know how long that's going to last. Uh, economies of scale will allow for leaders to edge out the competition because they can offer cheaper price points and they can figure out how to solve these problems faster. So we expect, as usual, a small set of leaders to emerge in each major geography. Now, micro mobility doesn't necessarily make sense in many locales. You can see a picture here. Uh, we took this in Chengdu. 
I think this was five years ago when the bicycle rental thesis was quite hot in China. And uh, since then, it's uh, uh, crashed quite bad. So uh, here you can see the uh, uh, big pile. There's a lot of these pictures that you can come across of how many bicycles went to waste after everybody entered that market. So by early 2018, around the time that we took that picture, there were 23 million shared bicycles plying the streets of China from 77 different companies. No barriers to entry. So that created a problem. And when you look here at this article from South China Morning Post, it talks about how companies that tried to capture market share by lowering price ran into some severe problems. So you could see where these two competing operators, Mobike and Ofo, uh, their cash burning tactics failed to pay off. That's another thing that you really need to consider here is the affordability element that can't be ignored and that caps the total addressable market. So just how many people can afford to constantly rent a micro mobility vehicle as opposed to buying a bike or as opposed to using other methods of transportation. Their feet, for example, in emerging markets where in Africa, people that are running between villages, they're not jobs. That's how they conduct transport in some places. So the micro mobility investment thesis is still all rather vague in terms of the total addressable market. So some people say, well, it's $1.4 trillion in the U.S. alone today. Well, probably not. $202 billion globally by 2030, maybe. Another estimate says $6.1 billion by 2027 globally. You can see these estimates are all over the place. So what we can be sure of is that there will be few winners and many, many losers. So investing in emerging leaders, we always say that's the approach we take as risk-averse investors to avoid blow-ups. In this particular case, that's even more important when you have a lot of competition and no barriers to entry. So there are a few publicly traded names available today. You have Bird that went public using a SPAC at a valuation of $2.3 billion. That's a $59 million company today, so you'd have lost 98% of your money investing in that SPAC. Many investors, most investors, were absolutely fleeced. Retail investors, of course, buy SPAC, something we warned about half a decade ago. Um, Bird is now trading on the New York Stock Exchange at 18 cents. It won't be there for very long if it trades at that level. They'll be delisted. That doesn't mean your shares become worthless. It simply means they begin trading on the over-the-counter market. Then you have Hellbiz, which also went public via SPAC at an implied value of $400 million. They're now trading on the NASDAQ, actually, at 14 cents. Again, they'll have some problems staying listed unless they can correct that share price. It's a $41 million company down nearly 90%. Now, when you look at Helbis, the promises that Helbis made investors, uh, this is just, uh, investors ought to be disgusted by by estimates that are this far off. So you can see that for 2022, this company had promised investors $165 million, and they should be on uh, track to close to $300 million in this year. So we look at what investors are asking uh, Google about this company, you could see that they're, they're not even interested in the company, they're interested in the stock. So you could see here this article earlier this year, help his stock up 280%. Why and could it keep going? Questions people ask, is it a good buy? Is it profitable? High, how high will the stock go? Again, people that are investing in a stock, not a company. When we actually look at what Hellbiz is up to in the most basic sense. So we pull up here their financials. This is when they acquired another company called Wheel. So on the left-hand side here, you can see the revenue and the cost of goods sold. This is a, a, a classic uh, thesis that's been coming up now for quite a while in our recent presentations and articles. It's about companies that produce a product or service that they have to sell for less than it costs to produce. So essentially subsidizing, as we mentioned earlier, as those bike sharing companies were doing, they're, they're subsidizing their business and subsidizing that revenue growth. This is pretty bad. So you could see here that they spent $62 million and that brought them in $23 million. The company that they acquired, the uh, this is called a gross margin, right? The gross margin was quite negative compared to their current gross margin. So this is not a sustainable business. It's not a business, right? 
In order to have a business, you need to produce a product or service and then sell it for more than it costs to produce. As they're trying to operate this company, on the right, you can see here how they're funding this operation. They're selling shares left and right and diluting the hell out of hell biz investors. You could just take a look on the right there at that table, how fast this dilution is happening. This is what uh, looks almost to be weekly. Uh, this dilution is absolutely, or let's say, uh, bi-monthly, that dilution is nuts. I've seen few companies diluting that frequently that fast. So when we look at the, you know, you can go to Yahoo Finance and look at these numbers yourself. That's where we pulled this. So at the top there, you have Hellbiz. And as we said, that TTM stands for trailing 12 months. Typically, that's the last year. You could see that uh, their cost of goods sold 43 million, and that brought them in 15 million. It's not a business. It's not sustainable. Below that, you can see Bird. First of all, notice how much more revenue Bird is bringing in. What somewhere around five times as much revenue as Help is. So Bird is bringing in a lot more revenue, and they're actually able to marginally squeak by. You can see there with a positive gross margin. Not a very profitable business, but again, when you're trying to capture market share and you're trying to figure things out. Um, it's anticipated that you might have tight gross margins. And once you start to reach economies of scale, then maybe that becomes less of an issue. Now, the company that everybody... So if you're bullish on micromobility, what we've been talking about, then you want to invest in the dog that has the greatest possibility of winning the race. And right now, that's a company called Lime. So... Lime is planning to go public. They're a self-ascribed, uh, world's largest shared electric vehicle company. They offer affordable pricing in over 200 cities in nearly 30 countries on five continents. Uh, they're probably not making the same mistakes as others have made. And when they do decide to go public, then we'll probably have some clarity around the total addressable market and the uh, actual addressable market, what they call the serviceable, serviceable addressable market that they can capture. And we can see what the economics look like. Now, a TechCrunch piece on Lime that was uh, actually published last month is very edifying. Talked about how Lime raised over $500 million in 2021. They're burning very little with what they say is unlimited runway. Uh, they say this interesting statement here, we continue to invest in markets at a moment where a lot of our competitors are pulling back precisely because they can't make money doing this. That makes sense. So you, you could have perhaps observed that in Doha where the price of a bird is more than an Uber because the bird needs to increase prices in order to run a sustainable business. But they will then be edged out by companies that can operate more efficiently. The scooter I rode in uh, Doha was, did not have a replaceable battery. Over the past several months, says this piece by TechCrunch, almost every major micro-mobility company has laid off staff and exited unprofitable markets. So the names they give here, Bird, Spin, Tier, Hellbiz, Voy, and Super Pedestrian. And they say 2022 was Lime's best year where they expanded into new markets. They hit record gross bookings of $466 million and even hired new employees. So Lime seems to be coming ahead in this race. Now, when we um, consider uh, our own position, so we don't have a dog in the race. So uh, I've and some of uh, my colleagues have been utilizing these micro mobility offerings around the globe. They're just really fun. Seriously, if you're in a new city and they offer, you see some scooters on the street, uh, you ought to download the app and give it a try. Be careful because uh, clearly these firms will downplay how many people uh, sauced driving home from the bar have uh, wrecked these things. They can be quite dangerous, so you just have to pay attention. Plus, people don't see you. They're very quiet. So there, there's a danger element there, but they're just loads of fun. Uh, what we've observed in all geographies that we've been writing these things in uh, would be a saturated market. Uh, and some early noisemakers in the public markets are attracting people's attention to the thesis. Uh, we noticed Hellbiz uh, stock is a popular name among retail investors, and it certainly has meme stock elements to it. We wouldn't touch Hellbiz stock with a 10-foot pole. So just to conclude, micro-mobility 
an extremely risky thesis because of all the unknowns, the lack of barriers to entry, all the players out there. And there's regulatory risks as well. How long will it be? So Lyme said they recently um, went live in New York and London. How long will it be before there's some uh, heavily publicized case of some in influential figure's son smashing his head on the ground on one of those things and suddenly they're outlawing it? There's a lot of risk around the whole thing. Uh, so even investing in leaders will be risky. Laggards are lemons. You just don't invest in them. If you're really bullish on micromobility, and that's what I think a lot of the hell biz, hell biz cheerleaders will come around and, and try to push on how uh, bullish they are. If you're really bullish and you really support this thesis, you'll invest in the leader. And right now, Lime is emerging as that leader. So if you want to come around and cheerlead Hellbiz stock, that's only going to further reinforce our avoid, especially when you don't have any value to add to the conversation. So as I said, we don't have a dog in the race. We're not short. We could really care less. But we will cover Lime when they go public because it's quite an interesting thesis. So I'm going to put up another video here that you might be interested in. But before you watch that, please click the Nanalyze logo on the right. Subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.